Boys. Okay, I promised you a video about 14 years ago um, to show you more or less how I built these things and so. So yeah, we have an uh, XBLJ13. The way that works is uh, the XB is normal a prefix. The L means it's got air brakes and the J means it's got vacuum brakes too. And uh, the thing with this is you got to start with a basic chassis, which is this, yeah, if I look, if I show you from the top, we have a single layer of six small perspex right through, uh, about 610 long or whatever, I can't even remember. And then you've got a second layer on which the pots in real life sits, the subframe, which is another six mil over the top here. And I guess you can do it just like that. Um, but there's a lot of nuts and bolts on these things. And just, this is personal preference, guys. I'm not aiming it at any of the other builders or whatever. So, as you have a funny wobble here, I'm going to cry on Anyway, so I like the nuts and the bolts on it. So, what we do is this front perspex here, we actually. Um, print the bolt heads on and we put a veneer on here, you see. So we print a single layer of Peggy with the bolt heads and stuff on and we put that on here just to cover it. And, and there's a little step here as well. You know, that's all just detail things. Okay, and then uh, from there you um, do the tanks. Now normally, if you can find a at the plumbing division of your hardware shop, a uh, pipe that's, uh, you know, more or less the same thickness as what you want to do. I do an XPJ7 with an 80 mil drain pipe or a down pipe. And uh, so do I, the XB4, the same story. But this one, this is a massive tank. I mean, this, this is a huge tank. So we had to print these tubs, okay, because there's nothing commercially available that is this diameter okay so we printed that and um this was we first did a pot where we put this in but it was a nightmare so we printed this all together and now uh, this one i sanded and resined and did all the nice stuff to that it's nice and smooth now once you have your chassis your side frames obviously these here is a whole fish belly that we print in two pieces that you see there's the join there okay you can see it now still because it's not painted uh, that you join there that's the whole fish belly uh, nice thing is you can do all these little detail things um, can go onto it and then you just stick that to the sides with epoxy and that's the end of that now normally uh, in the good old days most of the dudes don't know worry about what's going on underneath. I'm a bit anal about that, and shoot me, I don't care, but this is the underneath. So we print those, what we call teats, <laughs> and then uh, from there we uh, put the pipes out and all the stuff, and then, uh, you know, the plumbing and, and stuff like that. All right, so out of those, all the... Um, aeration pipes and the valves go which I will show you on the other one that I've done already now there's the bogies now let me show you the bogey the bogey is quite an intricate little thing this is a peggy so we print the side frame if you want to call it that in peggy and we do a bridge over like that also in peggy and then it gets screwed to this there between the springs you can see there's two little self tappers that we glue it as well, but we screw this in um, to keep these together. And then in every side frame, you can see there, you can check there, there's a 3 millimeter inside diameter, 8 millimeter outside diameter roller bearing on all the axles. And there was a huge fight back in the day over 
you know, the necessity of a roller bearing because the oxide you can do the same type of thing with a bush and that is a bull sheet. Um, we tested it at the club and I think that myth has been dispelled. Uh, there's nothing that runs like a roller bearing bogey. So, all right. And then once this is done, each different wagon has a different spacer here to, you know, sort of dictate where your chassis sit above the wheels. Okay. As this, this has got a cutout. I don't think you'll see it on this one. This has got a cutout. Yeah, you can. All right. Where the wheels run in. Um, because it's a very low wagon, this. It sits very, very low. And also the other thing is, it sits the overhang, there's zero overhang, it sits right at the front. Actually, if this thing, by the time this thing hits the coupler, that flange must touch this. Um, that's just your, that's a radius 5 bend. Slightly more than a radius 5, but um, uh, slightly tighter than a radius 5, but we use radius 5 with Cape Gauge 1. All right, the coupler is 831, normal KD with a gearbox. Um, let me just screw in there. And we print this thing that it actually takes that very neatly. Now, um, from there on, it's then murder, she wrote, because then all the stuff's going to be put on. Now, on the bogies, then the detail, there's the trapeziums, okay? This, this gets glued on afterwards. So that one's not glued yet. You see, it's loose. I glue them as soon as I got everything in. That holds the, the bottom of the brake. And you see, we print the brakes as well. Every caliper, or, well, brake shoe and caliper gets printed. And then it, the tolerances are very, very fine. And then we put them on here. Here's the other. This one I finished. This is tight and nicely done. So uh, then they can go on. And once that's done, you're, you've got a rolling chassis, which is basically what we have here. Then I screw the, I glue them, and I screw the tubs on. There's the screw in the middle there, but they get glued underneath the screws just to locate them so that they sit at the right place. And then, my dear friends, the fun starts. Now, you have to... Add all the brake, the whole brake system and everything. That's all this stuff here. These bags full of this stuff lying all over the place here. Um, because in 1 and 24, your detail is very pronounced. So from there, you go to this. So your air tank's got to go in your uprights, the, the brake wheels, everything. There's the air brake there. Okay. All right, that's where, what the L and XBLJ stands for. So that's the air brake with the pipes. To be absolutely, I mean, there should be an air pipe here. I've done one with it, but I've had problems that it interferes with a coupler, and I had a derailment. So I'm leaving them off now. But you know, if you guys want one and we buy and you want that on, then we do it. And then this is a very intricate wagon. So. You have all your pipes here, and they have little brackets like that, which is minute pieces of brass, and fine little pins that I use as a rivet or a bolt head that goes in there. And then, you know, we do the decals in our, so the maker plates in here, this is a union carriage and all sorts of crap there. Um, I don't think it'll focus on that. But in, yes. The name plates, everything gets done. You know, all the serrations, the pipes. I wanted to show you on the other one. When you're done with it, it looks something like that underneath here. I can't lift it over now because I see it's hanging on the on the step on the other side. You know, you see the little chains here. You see, there's a little chain there. Everyone's got its chain. Um, yeah, you can see, see there's the chain there. All the decals are in house. This is what the the final thing looks like. And there's little small minute details like this. Here it takes me. That's also two little pins. It's a piece of brass cut like that. It's a job, boys. The Oaks tell me, well, you, you with six and a half grand for a wagon. This will take me... I've been busy with this one to sand the pots and get it to where it is now is roughly about 
eight, nine hours. All right. Um, now the fun starts. It's a good 45, 50 hours to get it to be built like that because all these little handers, all those little blackers has to be bent. You know, it's, it, that's, that's brass pieces, you know, so that pipe you need to bend to shape and stuff like that. These at the top, the original ones we did, I actually laser cut them, but they didn't have depth. So you can actually see there now that they've got an indentation in the middle. They print it now, so they look a hell of a lot better. You see the stoppers there for the lids. All that stuff takes a hell of a long time. You know, so if you model HO scale and you look at a wagon, you know, all that stuff is normally either um, just cast onto the main body. They're not separately applied. But in uh, Cape Gauge 1 and 124, you cannot do that. You have to separately add all that detail. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a story. So there you have it. Then more or less see what goes into it. You know, the vacuum lines, you know, these pipes all get laid right through. Comes out the back, yeah, there it goes to the other pipe. Um, there is the, the other mechanism there. Okay, this was one of the ones that I built quite a while ago. I've got a different way of doing these now. I actually drill holes and pre-bend them. And then, you know, if I press that very hard, you'll break it off. With the new ones, you will bend it. Um, another new thing that I'm doing is these were all printed. And it's, in, in, in one way, it's actually quite nice because they can take abuse. They will bend. If, they, if there's something next to the track and it touches, it'll just bend out the way because it's bad It's bloody hard. Um, I do them out of brass now, and uh, I haven't had damages yet. But we'll see how they keep up because I can shape this, you know, a prettier shape with a brass. Okay. And then there's small little things like this is also brass. There. That's the document holders. And it's not there. It's focusing. And then once that's all done, we, um, we have to weather it to go from the. Uh, this one's going to be clean. Remember I told you last night we're going to keep this one clean. So, um, it's going to be all shiny. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you, these in the good old days were still filament printed. We're doing them in resin now, which is just magnificent. I mean, the way they pop um, from the old, you can see these, you can see on the filament, it's cuck. You see there, it's all grainy and um, a bit fuzzy. And you can't really sand there. Look, with a naked eye from here, they look fine. Um, but if you go close in or you take a picture of this thing, the guys zoom in, then you can see it. So we changed that to, uh, walk with me, to resin, because the resin is just magnificent detail. You'll see it's chalk and cheese. If you look at a sugar wagon, you see the detail on that dude. Now that's resin. That's the difference between resin and filament. It's it's really, that was a, a, a filament one, you see, zero detail, and this was a resin one. So when it's unpainted, um, you see there's also resin. If it's unpainted, they're actually quite beautiful. I had a look at one here now in the bag here. Um... Oh, they're pretty, man. There you can see it there. They come in, you see that? This is also for a sugar wagon. So I'm getting two delivered tomorrow so that we can uh, make this one nice and pretty. All right, and boy, so that's basically that. That's all I wanted to show you. That's today's video. I'll try and make one every day. Depends on how hard I feel I should work that specific day. <laughs> Today was one of those where I was like, um, maybe we should do this tomorrow. Anyway, all right, so I hope that but tomorrow night I'll show you when it's, you know, got all its stuff on before it goes for painting, and then you can see what I mean. Okay, boys, jylle moet lekker slaap is hoor, and see you later. Goed, uh, tot ziens.